A few months ago, I invented a 3D printable modular storage system called the Gridfinity. At first, the goal was just to sort out small parts, but soon I was cranking out caliper cradles, nozzle docks, printer mounts. I just went mad with power, designing dozens of accessories, and it turns out madness is contagious. Within hours of open sourcing the project, viewers were already sharing suspiciously slick organizers, suspiciously specific tool holders, and suspiciously suspicious suspicion. Today I'm going to show you the finest Gridfindy accessories designed by the Voidstar community. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, welcome back to Voidstar Lab. For weeks, I have been scouring things, printables, and anywhere homebrew Gridfinity might be lurking. The plan was to find the best and make a top 10, but halfway through printing the shortest shortlist I could make, I already had like 20 too many awesome modules than I could possibly feature in a single video. The only way to do their creators justice was to sort them into mm, curated collections to spread across multiple, possibly even Gridfinite episodes. Today's featured modules include the Ultimate Electronics Workstation, your responses to my suggestions, and storage boxes that think outside the box, literally, figuratively, and whichever way means I get to make puns. Our first model, however, doesn't fit into any of these categories because I designed it specifically to segue into a sponsored plug. This guy holds the Beagle Cam by Minchin, the only camera specifically designed to capture 3D printing time lapses. The Beagle is probably the easiest printer upgrade ever. Just plug it in, give it the Wi-Fi, upload your G-code, hit print, and this puppy-shaped FUD pucker snaps a stunning video of your print manifesting from thin air. There's no weird slicer settings to remember, there's no flickering autofocus to disable. Just click, yes, I would like a time lapse, and there you go. The trick is how the Beagle Cam automatically modifies your G-code to reset the extruder to the same position each layer. This stabilizes the spazzy print process into buttery smoothness without affecting the quality of the finished print. The Beagle isn't just a webcam, it's a full interface for your printer, not unlike a printer face, that lets you securely start and supervise your jobs from any PC or phone in your network. The live camera view, uh, complete with night vision, lets you be there the instant your $13 Amazon glitter filament goes haywire and ruins everything. Then you can share that magical experience right from your phone. If you want the ultimate in 3D printing power and control, you should probably just use Octoprint. But if you just want to get some footage for you Toxtagram or your sick of schlepping SD cards between your PC and your printer, or you just have like an entire closet full of printers and you want to see them all in one place, adopt a Beagle. As of July 2022, the Beagle is cheaper than either a Pi or a decent webcam, and Minchin gave us a special discount to make it even cheaper-er. I designed this Gridfinity mount that tightly mates with its keyholes, phrasing. So you can drop the Beagle onto a printer-mounted base plate and never worry about tripping over wires again. You could also slap your Beagle cam on the wall. This episode is going to get weird. If you want to learn more about the Beagle, or if you want to download any of today's models, just hit the links in the description. Description. Remember, open it in another window to fool YouTube into thinking you're still watching. In the first Gridfinity episode, I made a base plate for every printer I own, but since that first video, the community has really expanded the options. The clear winner was the Ender 3 Pro. Jacon made a double wide base plate, Maddie Nurseus made a power ledge to top the PSU, and this unpronounceable mass of letters sketched up a slide in sidecar that mounts to the rails with zero extra hardware. Citrus Burrs brought the Gridfinity to the Voron and any other printer made of 2020 rail, and Cynical 89 handled the CR10. If you do insist on throwing a pie at your printer, you may be interested in today's first community-created storage block, the Raspberry Pi case by Big Briscoe. It's perfect for all of your octo purposes, but you could also stack them high and deep if you're into that cluster computing cluster. If you do, I would add a fan because if you actually run a pie with another pie stacked on top, things are going to get hotter than your mom and probably saggier. When I made the original Gridfinity, I got so caught up in the modeling, printing, organizing, that I forgot what I actually you know, do on my workbench. Luckily, my fellow Flux Fume Huffers provided everything you need to build this entire soldering workstation. Mark H018 created this compact holder for the open source Pinesel soldering iron, and you know what? My Hacko FX888 might just lose its spot. I like to use an X-Acto knife to cut traces, scrape solder mask, and nail down tiny SMD parts, and that now rests, along with tons of spare blades, in this handy dock by Casper Tolstrup. 
The block next to it cradles the excellent engineer solder sucker and believe the hype, this thing truly sucks. The dock's creator, Ices, also designed the solder reel stand and I ran off two of them before realizing that my solder reels are too wide to fit. Instead, I put them in the wire spool holder by Big Briscoe, which is perfect for all your hookup wire, even your casual hookup wire. We're going solid. I'm not gonna leave you stranded. Jumper wires are stored in the balls of jumper wires on my shelf, and they make a giant mess every time I do a breadboard. I was going to make Vanilla Chief's jumper wire holder, which stretches them tight and props them up to save space, but uh, it was just too long for any jumper I own. How long is this guy's jumpers? The Chief's model was too difficult to modify, so I designed my own alternative. My horizontal jumper holder features a movable comb to accommodate all lengths of jumper, because you know what matters more than length? Color. Then Danger Close 35 blew my mind with one of the cleverest accessories in the entire Gridfinity ecosystem, the Helping Hand. It's an articulated ball and socket arm with an alligator clip on one end and a Gridfinity socket on the other. I'm not usually a big fan of Helping Hands because I find they get in the way more than they actually assist, but this lets you only deploy them where and when you need them and you can adjust the length. Remember to print that final joint in something that can handle heat unless you only intend to use this once. If you're interested in making your own Gridfinity stuff, I highly recommend you join the Voidstar Lab Discord at discord.gg slash voidstarlab and head to the Gridfinity channel. I try to check in every day so it's the best place to ask questions and share your own builds. Do you feel the call of the action? I floated a few module ideas in the first Gridfinity episode and to my surprise, some people actually made them. It's only fair to scratch the back that hand fed my gift horse in the mouth because after all, a stitch in the hand is worth two in the bush. First, I suggested memory card holders and Thingymaker 9000 delivered a pair of high density storage blocks that pack megabytes into just one squee gridfinity grid. Yeah. The first holds nine each SD and micro SD cards. The second has slots for 10 thumb drives or six thumb drives so full of data they're bulging at the seams. These are really densely packed. Uh, you might need tweezers to grab the one you want, so it's a good thing I made a tweezer holder last time. A lot of folks in the comment section of the first video like gave me crap for not like not maxing out the density, not packing the most stuff in here. And uh, this is why I fing our fingers are, are big clunky meat sticks. What if you don't need 18 SD cards? What if you just need one SD card? Your most transcendent trans flash deserves nothing less than the one SD card holder by Atucom. It's the only Gridfinity accessory that's probably better printed in resin and certainly the only one that deserved my fancy marble filament. Which ones and zeros befit such a lofty station? The answer is in your hands. Or the Atucom's hands? I don't even know if they're his hands. He probably found the hands. The answer is in someone's hands. Another suggestion I made was battery storage, and I was pleased to see a special well for my every cell. Brian C. Moses took on the triple A's. Anime reference dealt with the double A's. D. Hilton P. crushed the coin cells. Jer 074 nailed the 9 volts, and Shaping the Silence contained the 18650s. That last one is uh, deserves a special mention because it came with a cap. It's really clever because it lets you stack more blocks on top, and it makes these terrifying death cylinders that less likely to short out and explode. Michael Fuchs laughed at their restraint, floored the gas, and dropped the 15 square block assault on common sense entitled the ultimate battery holder. I didn't print this myself because I simply do not own enough batteries to fill it up. No one man should have this kind of power. Why are you looking over from behind the camera? Why are you blinking slowly at me? I also floated that we could replace my Dremel Agro Crag with Gridfinity, and a number of consummate rotary toolers accepted the challenge. Think 3 d impressed me with this monolithic storage slab, but this design by Sacrilegor is just on another level. It's an entire package of blocks and plates designed to transform the Dremel 8260 box set, along with the toolbox it comes in, into a clean, tidy Gridfinity caddy. I don't own the Dremel or the toolbox, but because it's Gridfinity, the individual blocks work with regular plates too. That's the magic of open standards. 
To recreate the iconic stepped layout, I ran off some height adaptive spacers by Big Brisco. Fun fact, I actually designed spacers of my own for the first episode, but I never released them because my design was just too wasteful. This minimal model conserves weight and filament and it prints really fast, though I wish it had magnets or screws because I'm a klutz. Friendship ended with Tremel tool holder, now grit- I- that beam is dusty. What's trending right now? Okay, I'll just grab my screwdriver and lower the storage into place and... In that first Gridfinity video, I also mentioned wall-mounted vertical base plates, specifically how they're a terrible idea, and it's inevitable that someone will make them anyways. Aducom is that someone. And here it is, a base plate designed to bolt right on your wall. Tool holders immediately fall off. Bins become automatic, non-stop dispensers. The nipper rack I mentioned actually works pretty well. Print at your own risk, use at your own risk, like, comment, subscribe at your own risk, support the channel on Patreon at your own risk. The money you waste might just be your own. At the end of the day, Gridfinity is about storing stuff in boxes, so that's today's final category, outside the box boxes. My storage bins are convenient and sturdy, but I will admit they do consume a lot of filament and they print real slow. Little Hobby Shop made a clever out-of-the-box solution, Vosmode bins. Vosmode prints a model as a single continuous line of filament, which gives these the thinnest possible walls, the lowest possible cost, and the fastest possible print time. This does have downsides. These are fragile, the label shelf is tricky to print, and uh, most machines can only run off a single VOS mode print at a time. Also, because of the properties of VOS mode, uh, these are limited to 1x1x6, but Little Hobby Shop did somehow make a divider version. I printed mine in polypropylene because its extreme layer adhesion and clarity make these just as tough as my version and far more transparent, albeit like a little bulgy. While I still had my PP inserted, I ran off NKC VIX Gridfinity bottles. Bottles aren't boxes, which makes them outside the box. These still stack onto base plates, and if you print the version with a cutout, they will also stack on each other. Vic designed the threads to fit the caps of British milk bottles, but since my country won the Revolutionary War, I had to run off K. Cobalt's printable alternative. Potion sellers take heed. 3D printed vessels will leak unless you use a watertight filament like polypropylene or tea glass and use special techniques for ensuring perfect layer adhesion. These are still ideal for solid pourables like nuts, M&M's, and M&M's with nuts in them. Oh, the sexy green M&M. Oh, and you brought a friend with you. When I designed the Gridfinity, I envisioned it would stay put. Well, this person, with a Polish name I am not physically capable of pronouncing, busted out this super clever base plate and lid that turns your Gridfinity bins into a toolbox. Fill the plate with any stackable storage blocks, drop another plate on top, latch it closed. Ridges on the underside nest into the bin's sockets to seal in the juices, and a convenient handle makes handling convenient. The consonant rich creator did a great job making the toolbox parametric. That means you can make yours as wide, deep, and high as you need just by editing a few variables. Fair warning, this model is not yet ready for prime time. The hinge holes print in the weakest orientation, uh, they need supports, and they're already thin to begin with, so this is extremely fragile. But a few tweaks and some filament with a good layer adhesion, and this could foster an entire new class of Gridfinity module designed to deploy a mobile workstation. I'm talking stuff like self contains soldering stations, test equipment, chemistry sets, uh, maybe even a picnic basket. This is out of the box because it's made out of boxes and it brings your boxes outside. The plain name of Robert J. Paisley's bins, plain bins, hides the fact that these are really big. This is 3 by 6 by 12 slots, which is big enough to fit a pair of shoes. Big enough that even if your printer is big enough to run it, curling is going to be a big problem. But that's not the out-of-the-box part, people. That's just the box. If you top it off with Rob's dispenser lid, you'll create a custom refillable container for paper towels, gloves, tissues, etc. Note how you pull them out of the box. That bin was big, but the next bin is really big. Like, fill your whole build envelope big. Like, too big to fit on the table big. So big, it needs to sit outside the box. 
It's the Grudfinity mounted hanging trash can by 3 Deer. You drop the frame hook onto the border slots of a base plate and weigh it down by filling its compartments or stacking more blocks on top. The bin itself hangs off the hooks dangling under the table, the subtle curve pulling its center of gravity beneath the base plate. The secret, once again, is vase mode. This massive bin is big enough to put a shopping bag inside, but because it prints in one continuous line, it only needs about 10 hours and 120 grams of filament. This waviness on the side isn't part of the model, by the way. Uh, this is what happens when you try to print wide flat walls in vase mode. At 300 millimeters on a side, the hanging trash can is the largest gridfinity element to date. While today's final model may technically be only the second biggest, it is indisputably the biggest brained. Suppose you want to take your parts bins to go. Small brain adult, turn the bins into a toolbox. Galactic brain kid, take your bins and put them in an even bigger bin. So WW9A Jr. took a divider box, scaled it up 500%, and pasted a base plate right in there. It's 4,000 cubic centimeters, it barely fits in a Prusa, it calls for half a kilo of filament, and it takes, at the absolute minimum, 32 straight hours of non-stop printing, and I absolutely love it. This was the perfect opportunity to bust out the ColorFab LWPLA from my Every Filament series. The hotter you print this stuff, the more it puffs up like popcorn, and I max that out to slash the filament use by 60%. This print is now as fragile as styrofoam, but it's less likely to flatten my toe if I drop it, and besides, I ain't wasting half a spool of the good stuff on a sight gag. I will say I love humorously large versions of regular things. Uh, there's a giant flask back there, and I have a giant key switch, and now I have one part of a giant gridfinity, so somebody hurry up and make me a giant base plate. You can download all this stuff in the description, and while you're there, make sure you check out the Beagle cam by Minchin so you too can get impressive time lapses with minimal effort and that is the second best amount of effort. Also big thank Renos to the Gridfinity channel on the Voidstar Discord who not only designed a lot of today's prints, they helped me unearth some sleepers I might have otherwise missed. Of course I must thank my munificent patrons who not only helped buy all this filament, they helped with all the magnets and glue and batteries and deburring blades. There's just a lot of stuff in this episode. Our supremely supportive collaborators are CMD, Caster the Catboy, Karen Houseman, Jeremy Arnold Schweddy Vag, Brian D. Swollen Nut, Chuck Faduke Small Dong, and a corn. I hid their names in this episode in plain sight, but I made it way too hard, and there is no way anyone is going to find them. Our very, very very serious lab assistant supporters include Brad Cox, Talon Democratic Socialist and a Pretty Righteous Dude, Dash Zach, Granville Schmidt, Lydia K, Thomas B. Myers, Storm B. Design, Max Lux says if you can't fix it, you don't own it, Ethan Gomes, Michael Roche, Saskatoon Cold Snap, Ryan Guler, SXP, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, The Cuttlefish, The Antifa, Pussy Nugget, One Handful of Beans, Xanforian, Burn Duck 3, Zoistra, Herb asserted nothing wrong yet. Protagonist, powerful CCH, Isekai Elf Mahiro Chan Desine, ooh, ooh. Nathan Johnson, Bagel, Steven Six Foot Six Figure Six Pack Schulte, Z <sighs> Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, Kevin DeGraff, <sighs> Bum Tickly 69. Epon Man, Katz, Trucku, Arrow Raider, John Raffleson, Gary Duval, Hank Scorpio, DSA Nani, Trans Rights, Rusty Flute, My Dog is a Bear, Bradford, Ben, Boulder Creekyard, James, Philip, the world's greatest drone pilot, Bot Grinder FPV, Azunda, Wielder of Iron, Heater of Shrink, Sir Derpington of Derptopia, Brad Stormer, Good Suck, Ashley Coleman, Eddie, Nino Gansitano, Bill Schooler, Varka, Bob Dobbington, and the seriousest of them all, Period Clots. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in Gridfinity Part 3. 3 Grid 3 Finity Electric Drift in Paradise with a Vengeance Reloaded in Space! Into Darkness Return of the Last Prisoner of Azkaban Underground 2 Volume 1 on Ice. In Space!